Well, hello everybody and welcome to Lunch Break Live. Real talk about obesity, food addiction, recovery, and what's really eating you. I am Carrie De La Cruz and today's show is all about the seduction and destruction, the nature of denial in our recovery lives. Big topic for a Monday, don't you think? All right. Let's get started. Let's just like dive right in. Now, if you um, are on my Bariatric Afterlife Facebook page, you'll see that I began to write something about this today. And um, I may or may not use that metaphor or analogy. I never know what to call it um, in this talk. So let me begin by saying uh, we've all done it. We're all, pr I I'm going to say we're all quite practiced in the art of denial. You can't deny it. It's absolutely true. And there's a very good reason for it. You know, I, I don't think that we set out to deny things for the purpose of harming ourselves. I think it's usually um, for protection. You know, protection from hurt and pain and, you know, sometimes not knowing what to do, being confused and just saying, no, no, I don't know anything about it. Okay, let me, um, I made some notes about this, all right? So let me just kind of start with that and say, why do we deny in the first place? Well, I think we deny reality because it's just too painful. It's just, it's too big. We don't know what to do about it. We just figure if we deny it, then it won't be real. Or it's too embarrassing. We're embarrassed to deny that we had any knowledge of it or that we were involved in it in any way or we're responsible. If we have no knowledge of it, it because we're just too embarrassed to admit it, better to deny, right? Sometimes we deny as if we could keep it from happening. Like we see it going on right in front of us, but if we deny that what we're seeing is happening, maybe it's not happening. You'll see this happen a lot in, you know, an example I like to give, but it is pretty profound, is the Twin Towers on 9-11. How many of us denied that that was happening as it unfolded before our very eyes? We are denying there's no possible way that a plane of any sort could have hit the, the World Trade Center. And it would have to be a very small plane, but how could a small plane make such a big hole? And wait a minute. So here comes another big plane. Oh my gosh, this can't be happening. This can't be intentional, but it can't be an accident either. Oh my gosh, the buildings are collapsing. No, 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 that can't be happening. That, so see, we're doing it for protection and we're saying, no, 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 it's not happening. I deny it because maybe if I don't accept that it's happening, it's not really happening, okay? We're protecting ourselves. Um, maybe we're denying it because we want to undo what already happened. A lot of us are quite practiced in this art. You know, as a recovering food addict, I can tell you, denying that I ate something that I didn't stop eating once I started it, in my mind for a really long time, protected me and made me think, well, maybe that just didn't happen at all. If I deny it, you know, it didn't happen. And inevitably, someone would come up to me and ask me who ate all of these things. And better to deny it. I have no idea, right? All right, not responsible, not me. Nope, I'm denying that one. I am not responsible. Okay, I don't want the responsibility. I don't want it to fall on me. So no, I don't know anything about it. I'm not responsible. There's some denial. Um, there's also plausible deniability, right? We're like, if I don't know anything about it, then I can't be held accountable. I can't be held responsible. Plausible deniability. Yeah, there's no way I could have known that, right? We're afraid that we will not be understood or accepted or supported. So we deny something if we feel that accepting it or acknowledging it won't be accepted by somebody else or they won't understand us, okay? Disbelief, again, this kind of the World Trade Center scenario. No, it's just too big for me to believe. So I will deny the reality of it because it's just impossible to believe. Or we don't wanna believe it, nope. Nope, that is just not something I'm willing to believe. Why? For any number of these other reasons. It's too painful, I don't wanna be responsible for it. I can't, it's too big for me to even fathom. I can't control it. If I acknowledge it, then that makes it real. And then what do I do, right? So there's a lot of reasons that we deny, 
reality. And it looks different on it, depending on what the thing is that we're denying, all right? I think we deny because, uh, let's see here, wait, sorry, lost my train of thought here. <clears throat> all right. When we deny, this is the note I made, it doesn't unhurt what hurts, and it certainly doesn't make it hurt less. And yet, isn't that where so many of us come from? We say, I'll deny it because it hurts too much to accept it. It hurts too much, but the reality is it doesn't make it hurt less. It really doesn't because it sticks with us. And how often does the thing get bigger and hurt more? Case in point, if you've ever broken your finger, right, or your ankle or anything, and you say, no, 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 I'm fine. There's no way I could have broken my ankle or my finger because I was just doing something stupid. So no, I did not. Yes, I'm aware that it's swollen and it's black and blue. Yes, I know I'm favoring it. I know that it hurts, but I'm fine. I'm totally fine, it's not broken. In other words, we're ignoring all the warning signs there. And people are looking at us saying, you know, I think you should go to the doctor there. I think you have a problem there. I really think something's not right there. But you, because you don't want to accept the reality of what a broken ankle or a broken finger might mean, deny its very existence, which what? Only makes it worse, only prolongs any recovery that you might hope for, and can often heal improperly. We know that, right? And so this is the strange thing. We deny that anything is wrong for any number of reasons. We don't want to believe it's true. Maybe we don't want anyone to think less of us. Like, oh, come on, how stupid. How the heck did you break your ankle? Or how the heck did you break your finger? We don't want to appear weak or needy. We don't want anyone to worry about us, right? I've got this, I've got this, don't worry. Um, in other words, people are saying there's a problem and you're saying there's not a problem, but they see that there's a problem and they're wondering why you can't see that there's a problem, which is a problem. That's how denial works. Now I call this um, the plane is crashing syndrome. And if you guys have been around me long enough, you've heard me talk about this, but this is something I coined uh, because of my daughter who is, by the way, quite skilled at denial. and. I don't know where she got this particular skill, and she's an only child, by the way. Um, so she, it's not as if she could deny anything and it was plausible because there might be a sibling that could be responsible for it. There were only three of us in the house, but for whatever reason, from the time she was born, my daughter was very, very good at denying reality, uh, denying truth. And so we'd say, Hannah, did you do this? And she'd say, nope. And she really believed it, nope. And we'd be like, okay, let's, I'm gonna give you another shot at this, Hannah. Did you do this? No. Now, what possible reason could she have for denying that she had done something that everyone knew that she had done? It's like, I know this sounds crass, but this makes me laugh. It's like farting in an elevator. It's only you and somebody else and you're like, I didn't do it. Seriously, they know you did it. That's what it's like with my daughter, right? I know you ate the cookies. The point is, she's like, no, I didn't. I did not eat the cookies. Did not eat the cookies. Okay, plausible deniability. Other times there would be situations that would be harmful to her in the long run if she kept going down the path that she was going, not turning in her homework at school, um, not reading and preparing for tests, whatever it was, right? Hiding notes from the teacher. I called it the plane is crashing because I'd, I'd say, Hannah, Hannah, the plane is crashing, honey. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's fine. It's all going to work out, mom. Plane is not crashing. There's smoke billowing out the tail, the back end. The plane is obviously going to crash. You know, you've got to make evasive maneuvers, take evasive action, pull up, pull up. And she's like, mom, it is totally fine. There is no problem. That plane would crash and she would say to me, I kid you not, wow, I totally did not see that coming. <laughs> I'm serious, okay? I'm like, how could you not see that coming? We told you it was going to happen and you kept saying it wasn't going to happen and we're all standing here going, that plane's gonna crash. How could you be surprised? Denial. How many of us get on the scale and deny what we're seeing because we're saying, well, there's just no possible way that could have happened because I didn't uh, eat anything, you know. I didn't eat enough to gain that weight. Uh, there's no particular reason. I didn't do anything differently this week. No, so in other words, I'm just gonna deny. It's a different scale. 
I'm weighing later in the day. I usually weigh naked. Whatever it is, we, ha we are so good at denying the evidence. What's sh it's being shown to us. That number is 10 pounds bigger and my clothes are tighter. And I am just not feeling quite right. The plane is crashing. The plane is crashing. And I'm saying, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's totally fine. And everyone around us, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, the weight is now demonstrably, you know, noticeable. Everyone can see and we're saying, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. And then we start fibbing about the amount that we've regained. Why? For all those reasons that we deny. We're embarrassed. We feel like we can't control it. We don't want to be responsible for it. We don't want to be misunderstood. We won't be accepted if, right? So we do that. Now I made some notes about this, um, as ever. All right. Um, da, 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 da. All right. If we know the plane is crashing, the, what we need to do is we need to figure out why is it crashing, right? Is it, is it engine trouble? Is it electrical? Is it a stabilizer? The stabilizer is a little bit off. Is there like no brakes, no thrust? What's going on? You see, that's what a pilot does. A pilot doesn't correct a problem if he doesn't know what the problem is. So in other words, you know, you pull up on the stick if you're, if you're crashing and, and your plane is descending, right? But not if you're going up. Maybe that's a stabilizer issue. Um, if we were going to look at this in our lives, we were going to say stabilizer issue. Maybe my life is imbalanced. Maybe I have been focusing on work and not taking time from, I've been going out. I'm not taking the time to pack my lunch. Um, I'm not working out after work. I'm not working out before work, whatever it is. I'm not taking my normal lunchtime walks. My life is imbalanced and I'm making unhealthy choices, right? Um, Maybe if there's no thrust, we're saying, you know, I just don't feel motivated. I don't know what it is. I just, I just don't feel motivated. Well, you've heard me talk about motivation. It's not, a, it's not an emotion. <laughs> so, you know, don't wait for it to happen. You got to make it happen, right? No th maybe you just don't have any gas in the tank. You know, maybe you're not eating healthy foods. Uh, you know, maybe there's a fire because, wow, you... You have just completely invited all the carbs back into your life and now they, they brought all their friends and they won't go away and you can't shut the door on them and they're back with a vengeance. There's some reality, there's some fire, right? Oh my gosh, what do I do? Maybe you're not getting support, right? You know, you need help with navigation. You can't, it's not just you flying the plane, right? Maybe you're not getting support anymore. So if you know your plane's crashing, you gotta figure out what are the things that are contributing to my systemic problem here with my airplane? Why will my plane not stay in the sky? You can't deny it. You cannot deny that you're making unhealthy choices and expect your plane to fly. And here's the thing, when you deny it in the face of people that are on the plane with you, let me tell you, how likely are they to wanna fly with you again if they do walk away? right? If you're a pilot and you're constantly crashing, do you think people are going to want to get on your plane with you? Even though you're saying, no, no, that wasn't me. I know. Okay. I realized that you saw me standing next to the plane crash, but that, that wasn't me. I'm a good, you know what? The problem was we ran out of gas because people didn't put the gas in the plane for me. And how would I know that, right? The navigator, the co-pilot, the autopilot came on, right? All these reasons that the pilot, I'm not responsible for flying the plane, but you're safe with me, just come on aboard. Wow, that messes with other people's heads and it really affects your credibility and the, that chance to get that healthy support, right? Because how likely are we to want to support people that lie to us, even if they're calling it denial? It's not healthy, you guys. And I realize, you know, there, denial takes lots and lots of forms. Um, you know, it can be something as simple as, you know, I'm just denying that I need to put my glasses on before I put my lipstick on before the show. I'm good, I've got this covered. No, I don't. All right, maybe it could be denial about the things that you're wearing and you're like, well, I fit them now, so I should be able to wear them and everybody's going, don't do that, don't do that, right? And you're denying, you're going, why not? I feel good, I look good, I'm fine. Or what about when people say, huh, you know what? Um, are you still working out or do you think you should be eating that? I realize that's not helpful, but that's people going, I'm seeing something. 
I'm seeing something and our shame is kicking in and our embarrassment is kicking in and we're saying, uh-oh, nope, everything's fine. No, oh no, the doctor said I could drink. Oh, it's totally fine. It's not a problem. If it's a problem, it's a problem, right? And denying it, denying that reality does not make it go away in any way, shape, or form. Um, let's see. Denial doesn't change reality. Neither does acceptance, okay? I know that sounds crazy. Acceptance doesn't change reality, but you can't change what you can't accept. In other words, if the damage is done, don't make it permanent by constantly denying the reality of it. See what you can do to put your plane back together, you know, to reclaim the wreckage of your life, whatever it is. What can you do? Get back up in the air and fly your plane, right? And start listening and looking for the warning signs. And when the idiot gauges are going off and you're hearing, pull up, pull up, pull up, do it. All right? Look at it, evaluate, and say, all right, I invited carbs back. Yep, time to go, guys. Time to go. Now, um, when they say, I wrote this too. When they say the truth hurts, I think denial hurts more. Because pretending it's not happening is harder than accepting that it really is happening. Okay, I got to read that again. I'm sure of it. The truth hurts, but I think denial hurts more because pretending it's not happening is harder than accepting it really is. You got to keep up the charade if you keep denying it. But if you accept it and own it, it takes the energy out of it. And you say, okay, so what's my plan of action? What am I going to do? Am I going to make it worse? Am I going to keep digging? Now, here was um, the little example that I put on my wall. All right, um, bariatric afterlife. I was talking about how you're at the water's edge, you're at the ocean, at the beach, and you're walking along the sand, and the water's lapping up against your feet, and life is good, and you're feeling good. You know, all engines are, you know, all systems are go. Wow, I just feel so good. I'm enjoying the water lapping up against my feet. I'm going to dig a hole. Well, the hole is starting right on the water's edge. You're starting to do things that you hadn't been doing when you were enjoying this walk on the beach, but now you're just going to what? You're going to start introducing things that maybe you weren't doing before. And so every time you take out a scoop of the sand, you put it over on a pile, and what happens? The water fills it in. So you're making no progress there, but you deny that, and you keep digging. And you're like, if I dig far enough, eventually the water won't be able to fill it in. Dig, 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 throw the sand out, and now what? The problem, the thing that you've been denying is the big hill of sand behind you. The hole is now deeper and can just hold more problems, more of reality, more of life that came flooding in. Why? Because you kept digging. You kept digging and pretending like everything was okay. And people said, don't dig there. Don't do that. That's just going to flood. That's just going to fill in. You're just asking for trouble. And you're denying it and saying, no, no, I will be different. My hole right at the water's edge will not fill with water because I say it won't. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? So I suggest you stop digging and you turn around and you look at that mound of sand that you have been denying exists. Stop adding to the sand pile. Stop digging the hole and reevaluate what it is that you said you wanted when you signed up for weight loss surgery, let's say, and decided you wanted to lose weight. When you took charge of your life, started seeing a doctor for uh, medically supervised weight loss. When you developed diabetes and you said, okay, time out, I've got to change my eating habits. Remember all of those things that you determined when you were walking along the water's edge and life was good, when your plane was gliding along in the sky above the clouds and life was good? Do you remember that? If you have denied your way into feeding your addiction, if it's food addiction, binging, if it's drinking, and you've denied and said it's not a problem, it's not a, everybody does it. It's not, I don't do it as much as they do, so it's not a problem. If you're denying yourself into a problem and you have a mound of dirt, a sand behind you, it's a problem, okay? And denying it is not gonna make the sand pile smaller. It's not gonna keep the plane in the air. It's not going to keep your life, it's not going to allow you to live a life in recovery from your obesity or your food addiction. It's just not. I understand that accepting reality requires courage. And guess what? Some of the reality that we accept, people are not going to like. Maybe we're not going to be accepted or understood. Maybe we're not going to be liked. 
And you know, there's a whole range of things that we live in denial about and we build little fantasies and little worlds around them to support them. Our little sand castles at the edge, the water's edge. We build all sorts of little sand castles so that we can reinforce our lies to ourselves and to others in the hope that all people will see is a beautiful little sand castle. But you know what? All it takes is one rush of water and that sand castle is gone. So own your crap. That's what this is all about. And recognize when you are denying, you are only hurting yourself. And the people around you are going to start questioning you. They're going to start questioning whether they can trust you, you know, whether you're an honest person, whether you're sane, they're going to question all kinds of things, whether they should trust you, right? Get on the plane with you. Maybe not. So that's how denial, I think, is seductive and destructive. You know, it seems like a good idea at the time until it's not. And I would encourage you guys this week to start looking at the ways, no matter how minor, no matter how major, the ways in which you have chosen to live in denial in your life and how that denial has negatively affected your life in recovery from obesity and addiction. All right, guys, so since I have gone long as usual, I will respond to all of your comments offline. And I will say, by the way, I'll wrap it up by thanking you again for being here. I am so grateful that you share your lunchtime or your afternoon or your mornings with me or whenever it is that you um, join the program. I'm so grateful that you're here and I thank you so very, very much. Uh, this past weekend, I was uh, down in Anaheim for obesity help for the conference and yeah, Fabio showed up. Whatever. How crazy is that? Fabio? Seriously? Um, it, a good time was had by all. I got to um, um, meet uh, and spend time with a lot of you guys who joined me for the program and I got to make new friends and, and it was really, really a revealing weekend. Um, and not without its denial out there. I'll just leave it at that. So, on that note, on that really happy note, no more denying. The plane is crashing. Do not come back to me and say, oh my gosh, I did not see that coming. You saw it coming. Just own it and pull up, all right? <laughs> you heard it from me first. All right, you guys, I'm signing off. Remember to have courage, seek peace, embrace joy, and above all, live your recovery. Remember, you can't stop feeding what's eating you if you don't know what's eating you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye. Ah! Signing off. <laughs>